Hello children. Welcome everyone to the first session of physics. Today the chapter that we are going to start in physics is the very first chapter that is the chapter of experimentation and measurement. Now before we begin with this very chapter I would like to bring under your notice that this very chapter must have been very familiar with you in the, as like you must have read this very chapter in the previous classes also in class 8, class 7 as well in class 6 also. But those were the things or the parameter that you must have studied in, on a very brief note. Now when we are going to deal in the physics related to this very chapter, we have to be very specific, we will be very precise and also exact. Why exact? Because physics itself is an experimental science or basically we can say a science of measurements that deals with the exact science. So that is why the most basic aspect of the study of physics is the measurement of the physical quantity to be taken up. Now, what is a physical quantity? The physical quantity is simply which can be measured or which can be expressed with numerical values like 5 hours, 20 meter, 98 degree Fahrenheit. What are these? These must be very familiar with you. We know that this complete thing refers to as for the time is concerned. This complete thing refers to as the length or the distance part and this as the temperature. So the temperature, the length, the time these are known as the physical quantity. Now every physical quantity is having two parts in it. One the numerical part and the other one is the unit. Numerical means the number part it could be 5, 20, 98 and the other one is a unit like hours, meter, Fahrenheit these are the units. So first of all why do we need physical quantity? Why do we need it? We need it so that we are able to have uniformity everywhere. Now, why and how do we use or how do we refer the word uniformity in the physics? Uniformity can be referred to as like, let's say that you are having a particular book. Suppose you have to measure this side of the book or the copy or the page, any particular thing. Now you don't have any scale. You don't have any scale to measure. Alright, so in that case, what are you going to do? We will be using probably the width of a finger or the span to measure. All right, and everyone knows these are not fixed for every human being. These keep on changing as per the different body measurement. Maybe you are quite tall. In that case, your width of the finger is going to be different from your friends or maybe from your brother or sister. So whatever you are going to measure using the width of a finger or the span, that will be different from your brother. So in that case, using the finger, the distance of the step, the length of the foot, and there used to be many other things also which used to be measured in the ancient time like the span, cubit, foot but these were not having a fixed value. Maybe they are using it is coming out to be of uh, 4 times the distance of the width of a finger when you are measuring it is coming out to be 3 times when your sister is measuring it is coming out to be 5 times. So each of them is having an is not having uniformity in the measurement, measurement part. So that is where the comparison part comes in. How do we be very sure that this particular th thing is not getting changed but how come the measuring quantity is getting changed because we were not having a fixed value to measure. Now in today's era we are having a physical I mean the fixed quantity through which we can compare and that is what it brings us to the comparison part and yes this is the process of comparison of a given quantity with the known standard quantity of a similar nature. All right. So this is the simply the process of comparison. It's very important the word comparing part of a given quantity with a known standard quantity of a similar nature. To understand that in a more better way, let's take an example like if we are having a line. I, initially, I do not know what is the length of this very line. All right. The starting end point is A and the end point, the other end point is B for this line segment. Now, I do not know what is the length. Maybe I can uh, predict maybe 3.8 centimeter maybe someone can say sir 4.5 centimeter yes but we cannot be very sure unless we do not measure it so we are going to use a scale to measure we are going to use a scale to measure then only we can say that what is the actual length of this very quantity or this very length so we are going to use a scale and we came to know after measuring it it comes out to be 4 centimeter all right it comes out to be 4 centimeter so this 4 centimeter refers to the length. So length is the physical quantity. Alright. Length is the 
physical quantity and the standard quantity that we are over here is doing the comparison how are we comparing this thing the standard quantity that we are using is the centimeter part or the length of our scale for the measurement now basically what it contains it contains two part in it one is the numerical part and the other one is the unit now let's divide it into smaller fragments of one one centimeter each because every fixed quantity is having one centimeter part that we have used so if suppose we are using four fragments in it so combining these four fragments what are we going to obtain four into one centimeter yes it will be four centimeter so basically one complete thing is the quantity of a combination of a different quantities in it or different standard quantities in it so that is what it is very important the process of comparison in it all right now let's say that what is a unit so the known standard quantity selected to measure a physical quantity that means like let's say that we have used a scale now what is the unit present in a scale we know that there are basically two units one is the centimeter and the other one is the inches so if we are using inches so it will be like one inches equals to 2.54 centimeter so it depends upon you whether you are using the inch part or you are using the centimeter so centimeter inches feet all these are basically the unit now over here what is the unit in the very first one when i have written five hours hours is the unit meter is the unit fahrenheit is the unit these are the units and 98 20 5 these are the numerical part all right children okay let's continue now let's see the characteristics of the standard unit the very first and the very foremost important part of this aspect is that it should be having a convenient size now what do you mean by this thing it means that let's say that we have to measure the length of this very paper all right we have to measure across the length of this very paper so obviously the unit that we are going to use will be centimeter we are not going to use kilometer if we are going to use kilometer so that will be an absurd unit we do not write it down to be a 0 0.0005 kilometers or something that is totally useless value that we cannot uh, have a particular or we do not use it particularly to write down such a smaller quantity or a such a smaller length whenever we deal in such a small length we use centimeter as a unit so that that means like if suppose when we have to use a distance between two cities yes in that case we'll be using the kilometer part all right so that should be a convenient size when we use a smaller distance or smaller part of the length we use centimeter or the meter and when we use a higher length or where we are going to have a greater value then we are going to use the kilometers next it should not change with respect to place and time suppose you had the book when you went to america now the same book you are measuring now you are not able to measure or maybe when you are measuring the same thing when you measured in india it was coming out to be like let's say for 4 centimeter 40 centimeter beat anything and when you are measuring the same thing in america it's coming out to be 4.2 centimeter 4.5 centimeter why that means the size of the thing that you used is not of a good order is not having proper measurement in it so it is should not be changing whatever be the actual length that contains in a scale it should remain the same throughout the world it should not change then it should be possible to define that means it should be having proper measurement the way we can read it out it should not be perishable and also it should be easily reproduced so these are the different characteristic that it can that should be present for every particular standard unit now there are basically two parts of it one is the fundamental or the basic quantity and the other one is the derived quantity now what are these two fundamental is basically the unit which is independent of any other unit like let's say when we have to measure a particular length we'll be simply using a scale the unit might be centimeter or the inches and we'll write down the value to be as centimeter 2.5 centimeter 3.7 centimeter it could be any particular thing so we do not have to depend upon anything no we are not having this parameter we do not have an area we do not have a measurement of volume we cannot calculate the length no it doesn't depend upon anything directly the value and that becomes the answer for that very length or that very thing so the examples could be like the length the time the temperature all these things whenever we have to take a temperature we directly use a thermometer and we get to know the value how much is the body th th temperature or a particular quantity how much is uh, is is it having the temperature in it simply straight away and so goes for the time 
if suppose after 5 second after 10 second after 1 minute we are easily able to differentiate between the different sub multiple units of time or the multiple units of time now what is the derived quantity the derived quantity is any unit which can be obtained by a combination of one or more fundamental unit like let's say area if suppose you have to calculate the area of a rectangle if you are not having a length or if you are not having a breadth you cannot calculate the area just like you used to do the questions related to the mensuration in mass to calculate the area of a rectangle right now we are specific, like uh, being precise and uh, let's stick to the rectangle part suppose you have to calculate the area of a rectangle we cannot calculate if we do not have the measurement of a length as well as the breadth only when we are having the both the values or both the parameters then only we can calculate the area of a uh, rectangle same goes for the force force is equal to mass into acceleration if we do not have the value of a mass of an object we do not have the acceleration of a body we cannot calculate the force and so goes for volume volume equal to length into breadth into height for a, any particular cuboid all right so density mass upon volume so these are the different things which depend upon the other parameters area is depending upon length and the breadth force is depending upon mass and acceleration volume is depending upon length and breadth and height or volume is depending upon mass and density so these are the things which are going to be calculated on the basis of the other values so these are the ones which are better known as the derived quantity all right now the fundamental quantity initially consists of three very basic thing that is the time the length as well as the mass so these are the three so these are the three things the length mass and time all right now what is the si unit of length we know that meter what is the si unit of mass kg kilogram we use grams also but that is not the standard unit system international basically and the time used is the second now apart from these the other fundamental quantity these are the very basic one because this is what being applicable to every thing most of the thing now apart from these three length mass and the time what are the fundamental one temperature which is having a kelvin unit luminous intensity like how bright or how luminous a particular object is glowing so for that we have a unit as candela electric current a being ampere amount of substance you must have studied in stoichiometry in chemistry a mole to represent a quantity that represents a pertain a pertaining to certain amount of substance angle radian we have any other units also all right then the one that comes under the derived will be acceleration unit is meter per square second so that means it depending upon the meter and the square of a second density kilogram mass meter cube cubic meter what is this this is a volume velocity displacement upon time so meter so these are area length into breadth meter square so these are the thing that depend upon so these are the one that are going to come under the derived quantity all right so this is what you can note down and you can go through this thing all right okay let's move ahead now the next thing that we are going to study is the cgs the fps and the mks what is this cgs fps and mks these are the three different standard form which are used to measure or used to measure particular physical quantity as per the cgs cgs is basically a french system fps is a british and mks is basically the metric system now in the cgs system that is what is a smaller unit that we use for so the c stands for centimeter g stands for gram and s stands for second so that is what it makes us cgs british fps where s stands for foot p stands for pound and s stands again for the second and where mks stands for m as meter k as kilogram and s as seconds so this is what is three different forms basically we use the mks form for representation of any particular basic unit these are the basic ones all right okay now we should be very well aware that apart from meter there are different units also that we use to measure it could be centimeter it could be kilometer and various other also we have decimeter we have decameter hectometer millimeter these are the different units so one someone some are higher some are lower how do we get to know which one is the multiple and which one is the sub multiple we compare it on the basis of the si unit what is the si unit of length correct meter so any unit which is higher than it will be known as a multiple unit kilometer hectometer hectometer decameter all these will be known as multiple units 
and units lower than it centimeter millimeter decimeter these are known as sub multiple clear so there has to be a relation right now what we are having we are looking into that what type of units will be known as sub multiple unit and which type of unit will be known as a multiple unit it is again on the basis of the standard unit that is si unit of a particular physical quantity all right now when we are having this very things so obviously there has to be a relation that exists between them so what is the relation relation has to be very clear you must have studied in the previous classes also like when we ask write down relation that exists between the si unit of force and the cgs unit of force so you straight away write down that 1 newton is equal to 10 to the power 5 dyne so dyne being the cgs unit and si unit being the newton so there has to be a relation so similarly over here like let's say write down the relation existing between the cgs unit and the si unit or the sub multiple and the multiple unit or meter and centimeter so 1 meter equal to 100 centimeter so now over here what is the relation the relation that we have shown is the sub multiple with a SI unit, not a multiple, sub multiple with a SI unit. All right, and now we know that very simple form: one kilometer equal to one thousand meter. Now, what is this relation? This relation is again the relation of a SI unit with a multiple unit. Over here, we had a relation of a SI unit with a sub multiple one. In this case, we are showing a relation that exists between the SI unit with a multiple one. So these things should be very clear to you. Same goes for other units also all right so go through all this thing that we have studied today that's it for the first lesson i mean the first part of this very lesson then after this once you are very clear with all these units and all then we are going to move ahead but you should be very well versed you should go and keep on revising these very thing though you must have studied in the previous classes but there will be a standard that will be elevated for that you need to be versed with all these things what we have studied today all right okay children that's it for the day bye bye have a nice day